Hey there, Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja. Today we are continuing our Crawl Space Problems video. A lot of people have issues in their Crawl Space, so I thought I would do a course that kind of breaks down exactly the problems that we see here at Crawl Space Ninja to help educate you about the many different problems you're gonna face with the crawl space. What you don't want is for someone to overlook a problem and then have to refix it or, uh, or readdress it later after you've already paid good money to fix it. So if, if you're well educated on some of the problems up front, then you can talk to the contractor or you can plan that DIY strategy on how to correct the crawl space properly so that it becomes a worry-free crawl space in the future, then all you have to do is maintain it, uh, either by doing uh, you know, sump pump maintenances or uh, dehumidifier maintenance. So let's get into uh, this video. This is video number two, and we're gonna be talking about standing water, but if you get a chance, make sure to look at last video from last week. It's got uh, some great comments and, and people seem to like it pretty well. We covered crawl space uh, problem number one, which is high humidity. And keep in mind, you can also have low humidity problems as well, but most of the time in the crawl space, it is a high humidity issue. Um, so make sure you check out that last video. So to get started, as I mentioned, we're gonna cover problem number two, uh, standing water. Now standing water typically comes from the foundation wall. I mean, most of the time, whenever you hire a waterproofing contractor, that is gonna be target one, is the water coming through the foundation wall. But I just wanna remind everyone that there's more than one place for water to intrude into your crawl space. You can come, it can come through the footer itself. It can come through high water tables, which is probably one of the most overlooked areas. And we'll get into that in a few slides. And then of course, plumbing leaks, which you know waterproofing contractors like us are not going to address. But if the crawl space is in great shape, you will catch those plumbing leaks as they happen more quickly because I can't tell you how many times we've been in a crawl space and not know if it was a plumbing problem or if it was some other kind of humidity problem or standing water problem. So whenever the crawl space is in good order, um, you can kind of tell. Like, let's take this example here. Is this a flood from a plumbing issue? Is this water intruding through the foundation wall? is this footer drain or is this water table? It's kind of hard to tell based on this picture. Obviously, there's a lot of standing water uh, here. Whether the water is coming through the foundation wall or not, it could be leaching up through the footer. It could be a water table issue. So all of these problems need to be addressed, uh, whether it's a plumbing leak or a foundation wall issue or other. So uh, I've even seen water come through the vents where the, the ground level was right up here. They did not have any kind of uh, retaining wall or any way for that, that moisture to go or be redirected to other places in the yard. So the water would actually travel right through the vent. I've seen that happen many times. So uh, there's lots of places for the water to enter the crawl space. So let's talk about some of these and what to look for so that you can make sure you're prepared uh, whenever the contractor either gives you an estimate or you decide to do it yourself. So I love this picture. This is obviously a basement, but I, I show this in order to talk about some of the issues that you will face in a crawl space. And of course, a lot of the issues that people with crawl spaces face, you will also face in basements as well. So this foundation wall, is a failed outside waterproofing membrane. That's the number one reason why this, this uh, water has started to come into this basement is the outside uh, footer drain, the waterproof membrane that they put on the outside, whether it was done during the construction process of the home or later has obviously failed. So that water has nowhere to go. It's easier for the water to travel through the block or through the concrete in a lot of instances than it is to go and be dispersed through the soil, especially if you live in a hard clay or, or a soil that, uh, that does not allow water to, to permeate through it easily. The path of least resistance is into the crawl space or the basement. Hydrostatic pressure is obviously building up in this uh, scenario, and I'll talk about hydrostatic pressure here in just a moment. Um, a lot of the time that we see these, especially older homes, these blocks are hollow, okay? So now they will pour them with concrete and use rebar and different things like that. But 
back in the day, uh, they didn't do that unless, you know, it was requested. I mean, especially these rural homes that didn't have a lot of code enforcement. Um, they, these blocks are just hollow. So these hollow blocks fill up with water. The water has nowhere to go but in. Um, if you're going to figure out if you have a, a current water issue, I encourage you to use a moisture meter. We've got some great moisture meters on our DIY store if you want to buy one, but you can actually set it for a masonry setting and you can test up this wall to see where the moisture is kind of sitting inside the block. And it'll also give you an indication of how high up uh, the water table is on the outside that you may need to address as well. But keep in mind that water can wick up from the footer. So just because you test for moisture here doesn't mean that you have a high water table on the outside. It could just have so much water coming through the footer, especially after a rain, that it just builds up inside that block wall. But moisture meters are good ways to indicate uh, whether you have a, a problem in the foundation block or in the uh, basement block. Um, as you can see here, this wall has been painted. So obviously, this is obvious, you have a moisture problem, okay? Probably before they painted the wall, it looked like this, you know? It was, it probably looked like this before, right? So then they put this paint over it. The only problem is the paint doesn't fix it, okay? So then what happens is they, they decided to paint the wall and uh, all that block was wet and now it's still wet, still coming in. Now the paint is a mold food source. So I'm not a big fan of painting walls. It does not seem to actually fix problems. It's more of a band-aid, especially depending on what kind of paint. It looks like they did a pretty good job painting it, filling most of the uh, small pores in the block, but still it came through and it came through with a vengeance. It even came through so much that you can see evidence of water on the slab itself. So make sure that your, your waterproofing or interior water management is addressing all the issues and not a band-aid. If you're buying a home and you see something like this, especially if the paint seems fresh, that's probably a red flag that they're trying to cover something up inside this foundation wall when it comes to standing water. So let's talk about hydrostatic pressure because it is a major problem for a lot of homes. So hydrostatic pressure, according to, the, to one of the definitions I found online, is pressure exerted by a fluid at rest due to gravity's force. All right, so let's think about that just for a moment. If you've ever been swimming and you're in a pool or the lake or the ocean or something like that, the deeper you go, the more you feel the pressure. And that's basically what's happening inside your house. The height of water causes the pressure to build uh, against this foundation wall. The taller the wall, the more pressure. Okay, so when you're swimming, it's like you're down here, you're feeling more pressure than if you were up on the surface. It's the same with foundation walls, okay? Any kind of structure, any type of building, the deeper it is in the dirt, the more hydrostatic pressure wants to exert itself against that building. So the greatest pressure is at the lowest point, which is at the footer. Which is why a lot of times, you know, soils and hydrostatic pressures can actually be so great on these foundation walls, it'll cause them to bow and to tip and to shear. Okay, so that's the power. Of course, soil can do that too. As the soil moves, it, it is most likely causing that problem. But hydrostatic pressures can be pretty intense as well. And that mixed with soil movement normally causes foundation wall problems. But let's look at this just for a moment. What happened whenever they built this house was usually this is all virgin soil out here. And, and so they, they dug all this out, okay, and created all of this open area so that the builders could get in and pour the footers and build the wall. Then they, they put fill back is what it's called. This is loose fill. Uh, and they probably did a decent job of, of compacting it. But Unlike the virgin soil out here, it allows a lot more water to intrude. So as this area here gets rained on, it, the water wants to go into the soil, but it found a path of least resistance right here. So as the water travels, especially on a level graded uh, uh, slope or a slope that grades towards the house, that's why you never want a slope that grades towards your home. If you live on a hill, 
you're, if you got a house up here, all of that water's coming down and then you supplied a great place for it to go into right into this area. Okay, so what you have to do, this downspout, for example, is also dumping all of this roof water right into this loose fill area here, which is going right down by the foundation and eventually making its way into the basement or the crawl space. That's why you want your downspouts extended, you know, we say at least 15 feet, but the taller the wall, the further you want to extend, okay? So what they would do is they would dig out more. Let's say this was a 14 foot deep uh, wall. They would have to dig out more in order to have a taller wall. If this was just a crawl space that was three feet tall, they wouldn't have to dig out as much. So keep that in mind whenever you're trying to address downspouts. See how this one is? It's past the loose fill. So that way, hopefully, it's going downhill once it reaches this area out here. The same thing with your sump pumps. If you've got a sump pump installed anywhere in here, you don't want to eject the water really close to the foundation wall. You want to get that sump pump drain as far out as possible. But you know, all of these areas, stair step cracks, anything like that, stress cracks that are happening, settling cracks that are happening, all of that is coming into the crawl space of the basement. And as I mentioned before, even if this footer fills up with water, it could wick straight up into this hollow block and then dump into here as well. And this concrete is not stopping the water. As you can see, it's got cracks in it as well from settling or the, the soil moving or whatever. And homes built uh, you know, many years ago probably don't even have a vapor barrier underneath them. So the, the concrete is just sitting right on either uh, rock or clay and that water path of least resistance is right inside the basement and if you've got a dirt floor crawl space or dirt basement it's coming right inside. This is just a better example of what I was talking about. Footer drains placed incorrectly. The footer drain is the main cause of the water intrusion into the crawl space in most cases but as I mentioned before you can have water table issues as well and I'll get into that in the next slide. But the footer drain the drain it could be placed improperly. It could have clogged due to shifting of the soil. The virgin soil versus the fill soil, which I'll get into in just a moment. Uh, and a lot of times these footer drains, they, they may have installed them to go to daylight, but over the years, someone has either broken that transition from the footer drain to the daylight or even completely covered it up, especially the excavators get in there and build a house next to you and maybe your footer drain was draining on that other piece of property. Uh, now it's got nowhere to go. So the drain gets clogged, the water just backs up. And of course, a lot of times there's no aggregate or sock around the footer drain. So it just fills up with sediment uh, and, and starts to become clogged. So let's look at this just for a moment. Again, this is the virgin soil versus the loose fill soil. That water goes down to this footer drain. Normally this would be okay if the footer drain is working properly. And I just wanna say a quick note here. This one is properly installed. I have seen architectural drawings where they will actually put the footer drain right here. I don't recommend footer drains be installed right here because this little transition piece, for even if this is a poured wall onto the concrete, this is a break right here that water can just go directly in. So if you are building a home, you want to make sure this waterproofing membrane comes all the way down and covers this transition and all the way to here. You don't want just this being waterproof because this is a crack that water can enter. Okay, so if you do all that correctly, you get this footer waterproofed the drain pipe is working properly. It should redirect all of this water to daylight, down the hill, whatever. But that's normally not the problem because these things get clogged, as you can see here. And then once that happens, this water just starts to go directly into the crawl space or the basement building up under the slab. And then there's another entry point right there if you have a slab uh, for the water to enter. And of course, if this is dirt, it's just going to fill up the crawl space, just like in that first picture I showed you. Okay, so the other issue here is this footer drain only protects to here. Okay, so if you've got a properly waterproofed outside wall with a properly installed footer drain, you're still not 100% protected. This is an intrusion area. This is an intrusion area. 
all of this is an intrusion area as well. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about high water tables. So let's get into that. Again, overlooked a lot is the water table in our industry, okay? So it's, it's not only overlooked by homeowners, it's overlooked by contractors. According to HUD.gov, uh, the water table as it rises can flood the crawl space anytime the dirt floor is lower than the outside dirt. Do you hear that? Anytime the dirt in the crawl space is lower than the dirt outside, the water can flood the crawl space. How many crawl spaces are there? If you have one, please comment down below. Do you have a crawl space where the dirt inside the crawl space is higher than the dirt outside? Normally that is not the case. Usually the dirt inside the crawl space is lower than the dirt outside. So this same principle can be applied to basements as well. If the, if the water table can come up, it doesn't matter how good your interior waterproofing is, how good the exterior waterproofing is, you are still going to take on water inside the crawl space. This is a great example of what I'm talking about. Let's say that I was coming into this house to fix this water, the standing water issue. Most contractors will only put interior waterproofing along the exterior wall and then overlook this section. As a matter of fact, they'll even cover it with plastic and not even, no, let's not even worry about it. What I would encourage you to do in this scenario is create a connection point with your trench, okay? So that way this water has the ability to drain into that exterior waterproofing system uh, and properly move as it needs to. Now, there are a few things you can do. You don't have to actually uh, connect them. You could put a sump pump right here if you wanted to, uh, so if, especially if this is a large area uh, that maybe would require more attention than this other sump pump can handle. So you could put a sump pump in here. Uh, you could also put a sump pump here or connect it, as I mentioned before, and then fill this with pea gravel so that this is level with the other dirt. Now that pea gravel is not gonna make the water go away, but at least now you have a level area to put the plastic down. So you're not accidentally putting your knee inside this uh, water issue and messing up the tape joints and all that. Because if you try to tape, right over here where these columns come down, that's gonna be a water intrusion area. So if you have a scenario like this, I would encourage you to either connect this to the outside water management system, put a sump pump inside of here. You can even do an interior water management system inside of here if it's large enough. Connect all of these footers with pipe and then draw them to a sump pump and then have uh, an interior water management system along the exterior wall. There's a lot of different ways to be creative with this, but the point is it needs to be addressed properly or this will start to float the plastic until the water gets on top of the soil, then it'll try to make its way. And by then your tape seams are gonna be compromised and you're gonna have huge issues. I encourage you if you get a chance, check out some of the videos that we've done. I did a flood zone and ways to address high water table with uh, uh, Andrew from Wilmington. And I'll put a link to that one down below. So if you're in a flood zone, it's a different scenario than if you're not in a flood zone. So make sure you check out that video if you want some help there. Okay, now we're gonna look at plumbing leaks. This obviously is out of our scope of uh, work. We are not plumbers. If you see plumbing leaks like this, this can truly flood entire crawl spaces. Uh, you can get plumbing leaks from toilet wax rings, HVAC condensate lines, sump pump discharge lines, sewer lines, supply lines, jacuzzi tubs. As a matter of fact, uh, we had a gentleman hire us many, many years ago, and it was a new build, brand new construction, and his crawl space was flooded on top of the plastic. There was water everywhere. It had gotten under the plastic, so the water looked a little muddy. So of course, we're like, okay, you got some kind of water intrusion from the outside. We start, you know, he had mold and everything, so we had to start pulling the insulation down and addressing the standing water. We pull the insulation down and come to find out that this was the jacuzzi tub that they did not connect to the rest of the plumbing, okay? So, and it was hidden by fiberglass insulation. So what happened was apparently the wife liked to take jacuzzi tub baths a couple times a week, and so she would get in there and then fill it up and then all of that water would drain right into their crawl space and then it would get under the plastic mixed with the mud and the clay and so we couldn't tell 
that it was a jacuzzi tub issue until we started remediating for the mold. So that's what that's another reason why I'm not a big fan of, of insulation up in the subfloor, especially uh, if you're not sure if, if your contractor did a great job connecting the plumbing because it can hide a lot of uh, plumbing issues and air uh, leakage issues if you, uh, if you had somebody that went through there and drilled 50 holes in order to run an electrical wire through. So anyway, if you get a chance and you can move that insulation aside, if you don't have mold, you don't have to remove it, of course, but if you can move it aside and check and make sure all the plumbings are connected properly before you do waterproofing, that would probably be a wise decision to make. So after everything is done, make sure if, that you get your plumber down there to check the plumbing or you do a visual and make sure everything is good. The other nice thing about encapsulating a crawl space is if you have a plumbing leak, you can actually hear that plumbing leak hit the plastic and, and it's pretty loud. Uh, we've been in, in situations where I heard a small drip, drip, drip hit the plastic and I knew instantly it was coming from a slow leak from some type of plumbing issue. So it, having it covered with insulation is only gonna hide issues even later on down the road. If the plumbing leak is really slow, it could just hold that moisture up against the subfloor, rot out entire subfloors uh, without you knowing about it. So be cautious about those things. This is another reason to make sure that you are addressing these water issues, whether it's humidity, standing water, something that can affect the home, okay? Standing water int introduces structural damage from humidity, expanding and contracting wood. Uh, as the wood absorbs moisture, it expands. As it dries out, it contracts. That normally happens every summer and winter cycle. Uh, you've got expanding and contracting of the wood, which can put a strain on the rest of the house. It also attracts termites. Anytime you have a wet, nasty, moist, humid crawl space, you're going to have the possibility of termites. Termites love moisture, so they're going to go in and try to eat that soft, wet wood. And then, of course, you have erosion uh, that washes out pillars and footers. And as I mentioned before, you've got hydrostatic pressure, of course, that can push against those exterior walls. But look at some of these problems that we have seen over the years. I'm not sure why this happened, um, but look at how this was dug out and this could have been a shift from the outside wall. Perhaps the footer was getting washed out or hydrostatic pressure or soil movement was causing the home to shift uh, one way or the other. So these are indications of water or, or uh, poor soil problems. It's not always a water problem. It could be soil and it's kind of hard to tell the difference. So you should address both if you can. So make sure you watch out for these things. Of course, rust. If you have any kind of rusting of your of your straps that keep the insulation up, that's a moisture problem indicator as well, even if you don't see standing water. And back to the HUD issue with water table, we always now recommend a water intrusion uh, a solution, even if we don't see standing water because of the HUD recommendation. So if I go into this crawl space, this crawl space is dry, right? It's only dry based on the time that I'm looking. Okay, so according to HUD, if water can rise up inside of this crawl space because this dirt is lower on the inside than the outside, I'm going to automatically recommend that you put in an interior waterproofing system as HUD recommends. They actually say that if you have a low floor crawl space, you should go ahead and waterproof that because of the possibility of the water table rising up into the crawl space, even though it may not be evident the day we do the inspection. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, let's talk about some standing water myths. There's quite a few out there, but uh, by the way, if you get a chance uh, to check out our book, Crawl Space Repair Myths Busted, we cover a lot of the standing water myths and that. I'll put a link to that book down below. But merely removing standing water is not enough to control humidity. A lot of contractors I've seen over the years will say, hey, if we put in a sump pump and a French drain, you're not going to have any humidity. Well, that's not true, okay, because standing water does not, it, it is a part of humidity, but as I mentioned in that first video, there's several different places humidity can come from. So you want to make sure you are addressing the standing water, but that is not the only fix for humidity. So make sure that you also install a dehumidifier if you have high humidity and install a water management system to address standing water. So make sure both of those things are happening in order to protect your crawl space. 
or your basement. All right, so if you get a chance, if you have a sump pump or you are thinking about installing a sump pump in the future, make sure you watch this video. This is eight tips for sump pump owners. I'm gonna put a link to this video down below. Basically, sump pump maintenance is necessary, all right? It makes it perform properly. We recommend you do it annually and make sure you test the pump properly. Don't reach in the hole and grab the float. This is the float. Don't reach in there and grab it and pull it. All right, because you're strong enough to make that float engage even if it's not working properly. So if you're going to test the pump, pour water into the basin and let that float rise on its own to engage the sump pump. Also, always install a check valve. We've done a few videos about you know how to properly install or the parts you're gonna need to properly install sump pumps. So just type that in, Crawl Space Ninja, uh, how to properly install a sump pump and you see, should see several of those videos as well. So how do we address standing water? This is a good information whether you're going to do this yourself or not. Also this applies to basements. Uh, we have recently started installing the hydroway system. This is a wonderful wonderful system. As you can see you have to remove very little or excavate very little dirt for this to fit so make sure that you install it properly obviously it does not have to be at the foot or level in a crawl space i just want it just under the surface of the dirt where in a basement it would be a different installation but in a crawl space i am only concerned about surface water i'm not concerned about footer water so you don't have to bury the pipe in the crawl space all the way down to the footer okay what's nice about the hydroway it is a zero reported fail rate in the field that's pretty impressive. This, uh, this product is being installed in uh, all types of situations in the basement waterproofing, the crawl space industry, in yard drainage, in uh, professional athletic fields like baseball, golf, um, golf courses are installing it, uh, football fields and, and all types of uh, scenarios. It's used in uh, creating roads and different things. So uh, zero reported fail rate, huge, huge testimony there. It's indestructible. It's made from HDPE, high density polyethylene. Uh, there are some knockoffs out there that are not made with HDPE. So make sure you actually are buying Hydroway. Um, Hydroway now comes in a, a gray and black or a salt and pepper looking bundle. So that way you know you're getting that. That's on our DIY store. We are shipping now the salt and pepper Hydroway. So don't buy the knockoffs and don't buy from somebody who's left it outside for a long period of time. Hydroway is not supposed to be exposed to the sunlight for very long because it can damage uh, the materials that they use. So if they put it outside, we keep all of our Hydroway in our warehouse so it doesn't have the sun exposure. And if it is outside for a short period of time, we do have it wrapped in black plastic and things to protect it from the UV rays. So uh, water collects from all sides of the hydroway. So it's not like most pumps or most uh, waterproofing systems, especially basement waterproofing systems, where it only collects water from this direction. Hydroway can collect from all four areas when installed. It removes water 70% faster than traditional systems. That's according to Hydroway itself. It's got no clog textile filter fabric. It's used in crawl space, yards, and basements, as I mentioned before. And if you want to do this yourself, we now have it available on our DIY store. And as I mentioned before, if you want to do your own basement, you can do your own basement. It's, it's a little different, um, but I know a lot of you out there could do that. So uh, if, if you decide to do that, let us know and we can uh, walk you through that process as well. Okay, so fixed flooding overview. Let's, uh, I just want to mention this video. 15 crawl space waterproofing mistakes to avoid. I recommend you watch this video. It talks about sump pumps, battery backups, water management systems, vapor barriers, downspout extensions, and French drains. There is more to waterproofing a basement or a crawl space than just installing an interior waterproofing system. This goes over many of that. By the way, battery backups are huge. I don't know why homeowners don't install a battery backup system on a sump pump, but when are you most likely going to need the sump pump during a storm? When are you most likely gonna lose power during a storm? If you're gonna invest in protecting your crawl space or your basement, invest in a great battery backup system. We have the SEC products on our website. They are fantastic. They will work with your current sump pump. You don't have to change it out. 
uh, and it's really good. We have one for a half horse or below or a three quarter horse or above. So we got some great products there. It uses marine batteries. It trickle charges those marine batteries. It only switches on as needed. Great product. So make sure you check that out It's the SEC product. And I'll put a link to that down below. Make sure you check out this. I, I did a, uh, both a blog and a YouTube version of this. It's the essential guide to crawl space waterproofing. So if you're a reader, you can read it or you can watch the video or uh, turn it on as you're driving. And it's got some great information. A lot of our videos are set up kind of like podcasts, so you don't actually have to be watching it. You can listen to it a lot of times. Uh, this one's a little different because I'm showing pictures. But anyway, a great resource, Essential Guide to Crawl Space Waterproofing. Let me know how you're liking this video down below. If you could like this video or give us some comments, I'd love to hear your feedback. If I maybe missed something in this or you had an issue uh, that I didn't cover when it comes to waterproofing your crawl space or your basement, love to hear from you. Please comment and like this video and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Next video is going to be what I consider problem number three, which is going to be the crawl space insulation problem. I can't tell you how many contractors do not properly insulate crawl spaces. So that'll be the next one that we talk about. So uh, please like and subscribe to our channel. Hope you like this video and I'll see you next week. Make it a happy and blessed day and we'll see you later.